Hello, this is Math Jess from Almost Cool. I have here a game that I, I heard about yesterday. Uh, it was this company variant emailed me asking if I wanted to demo this game for my math students. And uh, it's, it's an interesting premise. It's uh, an attempt to make an educational game where all of the puzzles are calculus based. And I thought, this is fascinating, because uh, as a kid, I, I used to play all those little educational games at school, and my parents would buy them for me at home, And but they always kind of top out at algebra, you know? There's, there really aren't educational games that go beyond, you know, high school algebra, or, or eighth grade algebra, or whenever you took algebra as a kid. And, uh, and this game is supposed to teach people calculus. I bought it yesterday, and I... I played it a little bit. I'm going to call what I did the first level of the game, although uh, there, there really aren't levels. But it, it seemed like a good level break to me. And I have... I'm, I'm going to be pretty harsh on this game. Um, there are lots of complaints that I have. But that's not because I don't love the game. I, I think it's a great idea. I, I actually think that the... Um, what I played through so far seems pretty pretty good. There are just uh, some things that I'll get to as we get through the, the game that I'll, I'll point out that uh, I thought were were problems, but that are totally fixable. And I'm going to be sending this link to Variant so that they can see what my, my comments are. Anyway, um, I will start the game now. So... So, w one thing I, I'd like to point out is that the, uh, the music is great. I, I absolutely love it. The power of the very stars. It has raised our civilization to heights that were once beyond our imagination. Now, the very power that made us what we are threatens to destroy us, just as it devastated our ancestors in millennia. There is such beauty on our world, and in all that we have built. All this will be lost as the stars send us once more into darkness. Or end us forever. But perhaps. All is not yet lost. Iqua. It's time. I will aid you if I can, but it is you who must rise to the challenge ahead. So. Iqua. Wake up. So I have to admit, I audibly groaned when I found that the main character's name was Iqua, as in equals, as in... Um, yeah, so, so, right off the bat, um, the, the things that, that were kind of obnoxious, and given, I, I, I did think that Equo was kind of a, an on-the-nose and, and ridiculous name, but it's kind of grown on me since then, and, and, you know, it has to, there are only so many unique names that you can come up with for a game, um, but anyway, the, the first thing to notice is that you do not have camera control in this game. Um, you can move, you know, forward and backward, left and right, but you cannot turn around, and that is very obnoxious. Basically, whenever you do a three-dimensional game, you need five dimensions of controls to be able to move through the space. You need to be able to move, you know, north and south, east and west... And you need to be able to jump, which you can't in this game. I'm hitting spacebar, and you see that line uh, turns on and off when I hit the spacebar. That line is the uh, kind of the objective line, like this is where you need to go to advance the story. But it's right where normal characters can, uh, you know, in, in most games, you hit the spacebar and you jump. So it's kind of obnoxious. Um, also, most games you move the mouse and it'll 
change which direction you're looking. You can't do that here. It's kind of obnoxious when you go through a door, particularly. And now, if I want to find my way back... If I want to find my way back, I have to, like, remember where the door was, because I can't look at it. And, and that's really obnoxious. But, um... But yeah, so that's that's some gameplay stuff that I, I know where you go when you disappear, but you always reappear here at the centroid. Centroid is also kind of on the nose. I don't remember who, or even what I am, nor do I truly know who you are. But I know the planet is in grave danger if we do not act soon. The other I thing is, I know, but you're going to have to trust me. Amnesia all the way around. Every character has it. And you all, you know, it's... It's a little tired. You'll need to master the panoptica and plant it in your retina. Hold on. It will activate momentarily. New panoptica access confirmed. Identify. Equa. Unregistered visitor. Identify. Solari. Registered entity of unknown origin. Unknown, it says. As if we haven't been working together for months now. No, I mustn't get distracted. Preceptor, is Equus staff configured for the local conditions? Analysis suggests functional improvements can be attained by connecting to a suitable data node. There's one ahead. Let's push onwards. As you can see, there are a lot of invisible walls in this game. No. Can't, can't go over here behind whatever this screen is. Can't go around over here. It's... You should be able to you know. jump that safely. I oh. can mark gaps that I predict are safe to cross by a self-propulsion on the Panoptica. Okay. So, it doesn't matter if you hit space to jump, or not. It doesn't matter if you're facing the right way. These jumps just always had a, happen automatically. And, you know, it would be kind of fun if you, um, could fall in and take damage or something, you know, be somehow punished for not making the jump. But every one of these jumps is, is automatic and it might as well not even be there. Is Vox nearby. Preceptor, can the staff access the recording? Affirmative, but it must first be reconfigured at a data node. Like this one here, you mean? So these are Lapis Voxes. Um, Vox for voice. Vox because it sounds like box and it look like boxes. Lapis because they're blue and made out of rock. Um, you know, a clever name. But if you hit E, you interact with them. Let me... Come on. Maybe I have to do this first. Configured. There you Updating go. Panoptica to display new interactions. Try it out on the lapis here. We'll see what it says. Ah, there we go. Is it working? It's recording? Amazing. We finally done it. The crystal fragment, shall we say the lapis box, is imprinting the audio frequencies like a footprint in the sand. Caster and I work so well together. The tone box is a complete success. One of the earliest successful uses of the Lapis Crystal at the dawning of the Third Age was to provide voice recordings. The Lapis Vox technology imprints frequencies into the crystal lattice in a manner that is stable and long-lasting. Through a suitable device, known as a tone box, these recordings can be accessed at a later date. So, um, I guess that's their equivalent of, like, uh, the Thomas Edison, um... Wax wheel is right here. Oh, this this leads to the next big uh, annoyance in this game. You see, to interact with anything, you hit E, which is standard for most first-person shooters on on a computer. You, know, you hit E to interact with things, but instead of hitting E to exit the things, you hit the right mouse button. So it, it feels weird to go up to something and E to use it and right mouse button to stop. It should be. Um, well, I would say. Concerned about getting lost, the preceptor can mark the path forward on the panoptica. Confirmed. However, you may disable the navigation path at any time should you acquire a desire to become lost. Preceptor, 
Why is this door sealed? There are no records of a door at this location. Sometimes I think you purposefully set out to vex me. Yeah, so anyway, as I was saying, uh, I would say that the the good, the, 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 the best solution to the interacting with objects problem is to just use E to enter and E to escape from uh, from these. Also, there's that space bar to give you that, that direct line. Um, not that you really have other paths to go down, as almost every alternative route um, dead ends very quickly. The conservatory seems to have become overgrown. You may have to do some climbing here. I can mark walls that may be traversed by a vertical ambulation on the Panoptica. Oh, and Perceptor always uses, you know, one dollar words when he could use climb or a one syllable word, you know. It's supposed to be endearing. I don't know if it really is. Um, but vertical ambulation. Ambulatory means to walk or use your legs. I guess you do use your legs when you climb, but I think that the arms are important there too. Lapis Sol, the largest kind of crystal known, capable of harvesting photomineric energy within their crystal lattices. The Mantha of the First Era could grow these crystals by some means lost to us. Now we are reduced to harvesting what they left behind. See, now if I want to look over here, I can't, like, move the camera. I have to walk over here. And that's kind of pretty. But it would be nice to be able to just look that way, rather than always looking in this one direction. I wish I could tell you something more about the centroid. But in truth, I am uncertain of its function. The technology here seems slightly more complex than anything else I've seen. The one thing I am certain about is that you always appear here. The Eosan Peninsula. We are not far from the Citadel, but I doubt any of the control stations there have survived the battering of the solar flares. Preceptor? Can you access the power matrix data feed from here, or do we need to get closer? Testing. Unable to comply. Disruptions to the photomineric network are too severe. There have to be some working consoles somewhere nearby. Come, Iqua. We should try and find the mapping station. Okay, so another thing about this game is it is very wordy. Um, I think that they're just trying to make sure that you... You understand what you're doing and where you're going and what it's for, but um, there, are, there are a lot. There's a lot of exposition at the beginning of this game. I think it has a Magnetic whimsical. Storms have disrupted a great many systems. You're going to have to redirect power flow if we're to cross here. See that blue node? It isn't receiving power. We need to find an emitter to send a beam of light to the node. When it's glowing brightly, we'll know we've successfully tapped into the power matrix. Okay, so what, what's happening here is there is a blue orb on the right side of that gate. When that is receiving power, this gate, sorry, this bridge will be complete and we can walk across it. This is the device that shoots power at that orb. So this is where the math part comes in. So these emitters, these uh, the thing that I just activated right now that I'm standing next to, um, they have one or more different puzzles. And each puzzle corresponds to a different orb that I can shoot power at. 
And so if I want to shoot now, given there's only one orb for this emitter here, and that's that orb there. But if I want to shoot power at that orb, I have to solve the corresponding problem for it. Now, this game is called Variant Limits, because it talks about limits in calculus. And so what we need to do is the, the first few, it'll give you these, these uh, little orbs here, and it'll tell you to put them somewhere on the, the selected dots on the graph. So there's only one place I can put this now, but basically the way that this orb works is that if the center is colored, then uh, I'm saying that the function is, uh, the function's value is equal to where I'm putting this orb. If the left side is colored, like this one is, I'm saying that the limit from the left at that point is wherever I put the orb, and if the right side is colored the same but for right-sided limits. So this is a left-sided limit orb, and I'm going to put it on this dot because that says that that says that the limit from the left is equal to this value here where I put the orb. I guess I can't remove the orb after I've placed it. Um, so yeah, and then again, instead of using E to get out of this, I have to use right click. So it's kind of weird, you know, E to get into them, right click to get out of them. And this will be probably, oh yeah. So see here, here I have my function. Its value is three on this region, and then it's five on this region. And the limit from the left is three, even though the value of the function is denoted up here. So for example, this function, f of one, two, three, f of three is five, this value. But the limit as x goes to three from the left is going to be 3. So I place this here. So it's nice that it starts kind of slowly and builds up to uh, more complicated. Seriously awry here. The energy limiter to this emitter has been disrupted. That's not as bad as it could be. You should be able to use your staff to attune the limiter to its crystal. I really don't know how that's any different from what I just did, but um, we have lots of orbs to place now. So the limit from the left is up here. So basically I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places to put my orbs. I have four orbs and all of them must be placed in a manner that is uh, correct. So I see that the limit from the left is up here. There is no limit from the left for this dot, so I can't place one. I mean, I can place it there, but it's wrong. I guess it also kicks me off if I try and place it there. Now, the limit from the left here is that number, uh, which I guess is like three. And then the limit from the left here and here are as follows. So it's pretty easy to get, but you know, a, a lot of students really struggle with what a limit is. And I think this is a nice graphical way of, of kind of picturing what a limit is. So. Um, and then you right click to get out. Energy limiters are safety mechanisms ensuring the safe transition of power between a crystal and the device it powers. Each limiter is programmable, allowing the function controlling energy input and output to be adjusted. Since the standardized notation was introduced, orbs upon a graph interface have been used to simplify function coding. And Again, lots of invisible walls in this game. Accessing mapping station. Can you connect to the power matrix data feed from here? Negative. No modulated data signal within the local photomineric network. However, power tracking pulse remains active, indicating the distributary is still intact. At last, some good news. If anywhere still has data access, it'd be the main power tracking station. Plot a route into the city. There's no time to lose. There's a lot of of techno babble too. But that's okay. No. It's it's trying to flush out the depth here. Okay. So this is the first like real puzzle, I guess, that you could you could say. Um and it's hard to show you what what I mean by that, but before now, it was go up to these columns and do the math problem, and then it would, 
you know, it'll let you move on to the next place. But here we have several different of these columns and they have to be arranged. Notice that this this uh, gate here, this little archway has one orb, but the next one has two. And so um, we have to activate all of these. I guess maybe this isn't what I'm the part that I'm thinking of. There's a part later where you have to solve multiple problems on the same emitter and point it to different gates and bridges to cross uh, one at a time so you can get, you know, from one emitter to the next emitter and then use that emitter to keep the gate open while you walk back across and uh, it'll be clear when I show this. Let's see. So those are all the left-sided limits. Now from the left I reach there, there, and there, and here are my right-sided limits. Notice that I come across there, and there, and there, from the right side. It is well known that the Mantha of the Third Era never recovered the entire technological prowess of the First Era. Most significantly, the knowledge of how to grow new Lapis Soul was never regained, and thus the power matrix could not be directly modified. The creation of emitters provided an ad hoc means of extending the reach of the underground crystal network by firing beams of light to transfer power. Nodes upon every device receive power and glow to indicate they are connected to the matrix. In this way, the Mantha of the Third Era compensated for the limits of their knowledge through application of their ingenuity. So they have this neat little history uh, for their their civilizations, and I, I like it. I, I think the story is interesting. So this is what I was talking about with. Uh, the same column having multiple problems. So, right now, this uh, this column that I'm standing next to is firing at the little gate, but I can also so it's firing at the little gate, or I can have it fire at the door, depending on what I'm trying to activate. So, let me try and go in here. I can. There we go. Two centuries after the rise, Kalos held a grand ceremony at the Citadel, to which all the Mantha were invited. He asked his twin daughters what they should do with the nanocrystals to advance Manthan society. Ava gave an impassioned speech about understanding the mysteries of the universe, the empowerment of philosophy and art, and the pursuit of the ideals of a perfect society. Vatra spoke instead of the crystal's capacity to enhance everyday life, to create superior housing, new transportation systems, and practical improvements to all aspects of Manthan life. Kalos was so moved by his daughter's visions that he decreed that each should have a city built in their name, where their dreams could be made a reality. End of log. Oh, the little windows match the the limit orbs that we place in the puzzles. That's kind of cute. Okay. Yeah. Um Excellent work. But alas, the bridge, you won't remember the Lapis Ovnis from our last meeting. Preceptor? Everything that receives power has an energy limiter. If that is damaged or out of tune, no energy can be channeled to it. If we're going to get further along this path, you're going to have to try and fix some of these broken limiters. Since energy is required to power devices, malfunctioning energy limiters disable equipment entirely.
Let's see. There's something up here. So, uh, one thing that's interesting about this game, and I haven't figured out how it works yet, but uh, teachers can set up classrooms. Basically, uh, my understanding, and, and this might be wrong, is that you can basically tell your students, you have to get to this level of the game by such and such time, and uh, the game will record that information and will... How do I go down from here? Down? Okay. So, uh, yeah, it basically keeps a grade book and it uh, logs how, how well the students are doing in your class. Now, I, I haven't seen that end of the program, um, but I've applied to have instructor access to the game. I must apologize, Equa. I haven't really told you anything about the crisis. In truth, there is not much I can tell. Solar storms have been intensifying for years now, building towards a second great cataclysm, one that would render our world uninhabitable. The planet appears to have been evacuated. But to where and by what means, I have absolutely no idea. Confirmed. No records exist for the current location of the land. And then, there's you. You have been appearing, working with me, but we don't know where you are coming from, or even who you are. Somewhere in the Citadel, or the great city that surrounds it, there must be answers to some of our questions. Oh, yeah, so this is this is what I th where I thought I was when I said the first puzzle. See, we have to first activate the bridge to cross it. And then, after we cross the bridge, we're going to activate another emitter. I think this one over here. Oh, these are value orbs. They have just the center color. They don't care about the limit. They only care what the value of the function actually is. And so, uh, the way that we denote values of functions normally is, is by coloring in a dot. And that'll say that the function's value is that dot. And, or we leave a, an open circle like this to say, you know, the function here is defined this way, but at this point, it's not defined to be there. It's defined to be somewhere else, or it might not be defined at all, as is the case in this function. Instead of being defined here, the function's value is defined there, there, and there, respectively, but it wasn't defined at all for x equals zero. Okay, so now... Notice that I have three orbs on this plate thing that I have to activate. I have to use this... Um, I have to use this to activate the gate. Oh, I guess I haven't done that puzzle. So, I'm activating this gate from the back. So that means that I can now go back to where I was and then I activate the central orb here then I'm gonna go across the bridge again take this orb redirect it there and then take this emitter that I haven't used yet and direct it there so this is kind of kind of the way that these puzzles go is that you have to activate an emitter to cross to another emitter you use that emitter to keep the bridge open while you uh, redirect your first emitter. And then you redirect the other emitter. So, again, limit from the left, limit from the right. Um, ooh. See, there's no limit from the right for this point. So, even though there's a limit from the left and from the right at this point, since I have two right-sided limits, and these points are the oh, sorry, this point and this point are the only points that have right-sided limits, these have to go here, which means that my left-sided limit goes here, and my value goes up there. And now I have activated this. This uh, this doesn't go anywhere. 
Let's see. But this pad here, this teleporter, will move me on the other side of those giant crystals in front of me. Which look like they could be just walked around, to be honest. But... Here we go. Transporting about... I don't know, 30 feet? 50 feet away? It's humbling to think that Mantha of the First Era had far greater command of the Lapis Omnis. The crystals that power all aspects of our life. Valid assertion. Yet this superior technical competence provided no adequate defense from the escalating solar flares that brought their civilization to an end. I fear history might be repeating itself. So, we started on the south side of this peninsula, and, uh, this? Hmm, I don't have a mouse here. But you can see there's an orange icon in the north, that's where we're standing. Right next to all the crystals that we just passed, the two circles on either side of those crystals are the two teleporter pads, and so basically we've been going counter, or sorry, we've been going clockwise around this island here. Our goal, by the way, um, if you look at the, the compass um, in the top right of the map, just a little bit to the left of that, there's a rock with like circles on it that's the teleport pad to get to our next area so this uh this level will end when we've completed going around to there i guess this is the teleport pad so this game and again you can turn on the the little help if you need it but this game is is fairly linear so far I, I think that that might change. Oh, this is where, where it gets fun. Now we get these blank orbs, and we have to color them in first. So this has a limit from the left, no value, and uh, no limit from the right. So we've colored an orb that way, and we place it down. So I like these puzzles. Um, although I kind of wish that the orbs would show up on the dots automatically because there's the kind of like the big test at the end the three eras of the mantha stand as evidence to the remarkable capacities of the species despite their technological advancement the mantha of the first era lacked the means to prevent the escalating solar flares that brought their time to an end in the second era exiled beneath the ground by the devastation of the cataclysm the mantha were reduced to fragile refugees with the rise, however, these nomads from a greater past proved their tenacity and ingenuity, escaping from the perils below and out into the lush world waiting above. It cannot be denied that the First Era possessed greater competence with the Lapis Omnis, the nanocrystals that power all aspects of Manthan life. Yet who can deny the evidence? Those of the First Era were still rendered powerless in the face of the Cataclysm. End of log. So yeah, as I was saying, at the end... Solar flares are not the only problem we are facing. I am convinced of it. Confirmed. Coronal ejections cannot be responsible for seismic activity. The data feed that piggybacks on the power matrix is our best hope for answers. We just have to find somewhere that still has access to it. So, as I was saying, at the end there's kind of like a test where you you have lots and lots of different orbs you have to color in place and it's kind of tedious dragging them back and forth not back and forth but there uh, like this one here has seven orbs i think that the one at the end has like 15 or something so this goes to here because the limit from the right and the left and the value of the function are all at that point this one is just a valid a limit from the left. This one up here is the value plus the limit from the right. This one is the limit from the left plus the value. This one is just a limit from the right. This one is just the limit from both sides. And this one is just the value. Now that I have these, I place them accordingly. Oops. Okay, so 
Um, what was this puzzle again? Oh, okay. I need to redirect one of them down there. There's no time to lose. Time passes, but cannot be lost. A metaphor, Preceptor? Try and wrap your inflexible mind around the idea. Oops. So, uh, another thing is, um, I, I understand this limit is kind of getting the intuitive feel for what a limit is, and how it's different from a value, and what right and left limits are. Um, there's no computation so far of, of anything, and so I think that they'll get to that in other levels. The building of the new cities was tasked to Castor, who Kalos treated as if he were a son. Working together with Callus's daughters, Castor found ways to bring their unique visions to life. Thus were built the Twin Cities, far beyond the walls of the Citadel. End of log. Havana, a city of artists, philosophers, and visionaries, who strive together to perfect knowledge and artistry. Patrana, a mechanized paradise, where the citizens were served by new machines beyond anyone's imagining. This gate will take us through to the Citadel, but we'll need to get it enough power first. Redirecting sufficient power from nearby sources will permit the functioning of this gate, enabling access to Eosus. I literally just said that. That's not where we want this to go right now. We have to get three different um, orbs lit up on this gate. One of the emitters is behind this gate. Another emitter is behind that gate. So what we need to do is redirect this emitter at the first gate and then use it to get the uh, second gate open and then after that we'll have all of the emitters we need to open the portal up here isn't that adorable it's like a little happy face So this is actually a really neat graph here, because it shows that, I, I think that up to this point, all of our uh, limits have also had, um, none of them have been cusps, so all of them have had, had uh, defined derivatives, all of them have been kind of smooth. But this one here has, it's not only that the limit from each side exists, and that the limits from each side are equal, but they're also equal to the value. 
And so we can see that even though continuity is a really neat property, um, continuity does not guarantee smoothness. We, we need to know about derivatives to guarantee that we don't have sharp corners or edges on our functions. This is the one I was telling you about. I think that this has, looks like it has 17 orbs to place, and it's kind of tedious getting all of them on there. But it's not too bad. I wonder if these are like randomly generated or if they're the same every time that the game is played. It's, it should be possible to randomly generate these things. Then each student would get a different problem to play. Oops. There we go. So, even though it's a little tedious getting all of these in place, if you just make all of your dots in order, then you can just put them on in order. Ooh. I colored something wrong somewhere. That one's right. sure I did that right. Value and the limit from the left. Limits from both sides. Limit from the right only. Limit from the left and value. Value only. Limits from both sides. Limit from the right only. Left and value. Right and value. Left only. Right and value. Ah. There you go. Uh, that's the limit from the left only, from the right only, left and value, right and value, left only, right and value. There you go. So, this is again, the camera angle is kind of weird. I knew you could do it. The gate is open now. Let's get into the city. And that is what I'm going to call the first level of Eocos, this game. A magnificently efficient display of architectural prowess. The power conduits are effortlessly concealed throughout. Every city on this world owes a debt to the pioneering work of those that built the citadel and the city that grew up around it. If there has ever been a more perfect expression of Kallus' leadership, I am unaware of it. Interfacing with local systems reveals magnetic storms have damaged civic operations significantly. Even so, 
The citadel and the city of Eosos around it are the very nexus of Manthan civilization. There will be something to help us here, I am certain. And we will save the game and come back next time. So, let's see. So, see you next time. Bye. Hope you're enjoying learning calculus and playing this game.